Hi, so this is a piece I've been working on from my book Inky Theatrical Faces and today um, I'm going to show you how I do skin tone. So I'm using Faber-Castell Polychromo pencils and I have here a few skinny earthy tone colours. I'm going to start off with light which is the flesh colour and build up a depth of colour on top of that. Um, hopefully I get it right, seems as I'm filming it. If not, <laughs> we'll see. So I'm starting off lightly because I can always go darker, whereas obviously it's hard to go lighter. I mean, you, you know, you can erase some coloured pencil to a certain extent you can get erasers out there I tend to use blue tack actually um, which some of you will have seen in some of the tutorials I've done so I'm just starting to kind of go on the places at first where I want it to be the darkest so cheekbone coming down to her pouty lips and um, I will I think do a tutorial on how I colour lips at some point if anyone's interested look out for that one but for now it's the ambitious skin tone which can actually be very scary and if you're someone that just gets a skin tone pencil and just lightly colours in the face one colour that's absolutely fine it's all about what you enjoy doing you don't have to um, go to completely to town on it like I seem to do when I'm colouring. Um, sometimes I think I'll just do a quick piece today with lots of flat colour because um, colouring in pictures still looks nice. Um, but yeah, I always end up getting carried away and going over the top and putting extra bits in and doing backgrounds but you know colouring is just about having fun really and relaxing so you do whatever you want but if anyone wants to learn how I do skin tone then watch this so I've got I'm pressing lightly because I don't want to make any hard marks and uh, I guess you can see the way I colour in a sort of elliptical. I'm leaving a gap around the outside. Um, don't ask me why, I suppose it's as if there's, I mean, light doesn't always come from one source. There could be a light off the side of the page. Um, but uh, yeah, that's just how I do it. Can't think of a reason. <laughs> so it tends to be darkish under, excuse me for sniffing under the eyes. One good way to um, kind of get a feel for light and shade I've always found is to squint at something. So say you have a photograph of you know sister, brother, daughter, um, have a look at the photo and squint a bit and that kind of helps the light and the dark to stand out more to give you an idea that you know what places should be light and what places should be dark. Uh, I mean generally obviously the light, if the light's coming from here, the light would be on the areas that protrude. Um, so down here, bridge of the nose would be light. This pointy bit on the nose, she's got a bit of a turned up nose. This would have shadow in the, um, I can't think what it's called, but sort of dip between your lips. So I don't know how well you can see, but I'm just putting literally a, some base down. Go under the chin, because there'll be shadow under the chin. And a little light bit under the eye, but I would like to leave a white line under the lashes. Okay, 
So, so far I'm leaving this area white, um, coming down the nose white, although there would be a bit of shadow sort of at the start of the eyebrows. That bit's mainly white. And I've got sort of white light areas here and here. Okay, so now I'm going to go for another pencil. I think I'll see how this one goes. This is a, looks a bit, what's it called? Looks a bit like a tan colour, if that helps. Um, if it's not right, I'll always change it. Now I'm only tickling the page really lightly. I don't want to make any harsh marks. And I don't want to go too dark in case the shade's wrong. <laughs> And I don't want to go too dark because then, like I said, it's harder to go lighter. I'm trying to do exactly the same on both sides so it's basically mirrored. It's going to be darker around the hairline. Okay, so as I said, I am just pressing really lightly because I'm going to build up the colour. Oh, excuse me, sniffing again. It's because I've been out in the cold today. Okay, so this stretch of the cheek will be the darkest. There will be other colours to go on. And I'm going to tick it, tickle it lightly down to the point of the cheek, but not quite that, sorry, point of the lips, but not quite that far. Bit of dark round here, leaving a little white between the drawing line. I think it just gives it a lift but you don't have to do that. You can take it right to the line. It will still look as good. Okay so I am going darker on the edge. I'm fading it in. So I'm trying to get a sort of that section here faded. Okay, well that's building up. It's coming right down from the hair, so no gap between the hair and the shading. Try and give us some nice distinct cheekbones. Again, bringing that in the direction towards the lip. I'm pressing a bit harder here. Okay, darker here, here, fading into the centre of the neck, but also, ooh, that's a funny angle to draw at for me, also darker under the chin, yeah that's a really weird angle. I'm trying to um, I'm trying to angle filming so you get the front view, which means I'm colouring sort of side on, but it's okay. Okay, can you see how that's building up? So that's two colours we've done. Okay, we've done a skin, a fleshy, pale tone, and a sort of tan. Um, what shall I go for now? I think I'll have a go with this one because those are a bit sort of, um, I don't want it to go too orangey. Um, this one, what would, this is kind of like, oh, it says raw umber, there you go. Raw umber, this colour. And it's still, you know, a palish tone. So I'm going to put some of this on the cheek first and see how that colour looks. So I'm pressing a bit harder than I wanted just tickling. Um, to tickle, I'd probably say one tip is to have a not sharp edge, not sharp tip of the pencil. So if you need to take a scrap of paper and go like that to make it um, a rounder, smoother edge, because otherwise you will get harsher, stronger marks. Tickling just means you can build up the colour and, um, you know, not go wrong as quickly. <laughs> I'm 
but yeah the danger is having a face turn the wrong sort of shade like um, too orangey as if she's got fake tan on or you know I mean obviously there are lots of different skin tones I'm just going for I suppose well, my sort of skin tone because that's what I'm used to colouring Again, a bit dark around the hairline towards that sort of tip of the brow and fading in and leaving the main part of the forehead very pale. Now I can start seeing some marks um, with my pencil, directional marks, but as we keep building it up um, hopefully they'll be disguised or I can always go over with them um, with a white pencil to sort of burnish it and get rid of the marks right let me do something under these eyes I want to leave a white rim under the eye so I'm very gently so that I don't do something I don't like I'm gonna do a bit of a line very faded, very gently, um, and a bit sort of wider. But I'm not sure I like that. <laughs> well, Ooh. very subtle. In fact, I'm going to take it right there. Yeah, not too keen. The um, pencil tip hasn't gone in the place I wanted it, but never mind. And then, above that crease, I'm going to put a bit of darker raw umber. Because there's always a shadow under there fading up, or she might have eyeshadow on. And leave that just under the brow, particularly this area, as lighter it's okay I might have to do this bit upside down right so I'm going to do a bit on oh, my nib getting the pencil in the wrong place bit on the edge of the nose and soften that, fade it out. Don't want any harsh lines. Right, how's that looking? Okay, under the nose, well, I will do her nostrils probably black. I don't mess this up with the angular mat, but I'm going to do some under the edges of the nostrils as shadow. Soft tickling motion under the there. And bit to indicate that little dip there I go sniffing again lovely okay that's not looking too bad I get a bit of On that black. Okay, and I want a tiny bit of this above the nostrils, which just helps this part look like it's coming forward more. I am tickling, and then if it's not enough, then I'm pressing ever slightly harder. But just don't go in with 
strong marks. Just build it up gently. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do now is try introducing a bit of grey just to bring the sort of, it's not really orange, but just to tone down the fleshy colour. This is sort of, so I'm going to do this really light because otherwise it's going to come out dark. This is, I don't know, this probably is a dark grey. That's just going to take the edge off the colour. I do want that, those two sections to sort of meet really. If you can hear faintly in the background, that's um, one of my dogs snoring. Okay, now I want some under, some grey under the lip, because she's kind of pouting, isn't she? So we definitely want a shadow under her lips. And I'd like a bit under the eye. and I'm going to do a bit around the hairline but I'm not taking the grey too far in and because it will ruin all my other shading because this is a dark colour Okay, now I'm going to add a bit of grey there, that line down a bit, just take off the brown orangeness and bring some down here to soften the actual black illustration line. And actually I'll probably put some grey there and sort of join those a bit, if that makes sense. A bit under the nose. So by putting the grey on top of um, the other flesh and tan brown shades, I'm kind of dampening down how sort of beige it's looking. Don't want her nose to look too harsh, so I'm just trying to soften that down a bit. Probably shouldn't do it in such a dark colour. Okay, I'm going to now go and try and introduce a little bit of, um, what's this called, Venetian red. So it's kind of a muted pinky tone, pinky brown, very softly, put some on a bit of the cheek just to introduce a sort of pinky tone so it's not all fleshy browns. Okay, so I'm daring to go a bit harder, but it's, it's still it's hardly touching the paper um, here and softer down here, which is barely touching really. If I want a bit more, because it could be that she has blusher on, so if you go wrong and she turns out really quite rouge, then that's okay because people 
Some people wear blusher. Have a bit up here just to give it a bit of a. Basically, I'm just using a variety of colours to try and build up the look of a skin colour. Um, you can actually put some soft um, green, have I got one? It's a very sort of muted green because, um, you know, skin tones do reflect, you know, different things around them and sometimes I think that, yeah, a bit of green, I'm not going to do too much, I don't want it to look ill or or like an alien. <laughs> right, now, um, yeah, this is a dark brown, so I'm being daring now and trying to get a sharper cheek edge. Okay, but again, I'm only tickling the page with the pencil because I don't want to mess it up, I've come this far. But if I do, then I do. So that's um, coming along, that's nice and subtle and you know if you want to you can end there or if you just want to give it a go you don't go that far you can end you know just do the first stage with the flesh colour to give it a little bit of a lift and end there you don't have to go as um, far as I have with all the colours. I'm going over again with the flesh colour because now I've got the darker and other colours in place I can bring the flesh colour a bit more into the whites, white areas, the highlights a little bit down the side of the nose there I think fading out into the cheek and I don't want this to be such a harsh triangle so I'm going to put some here just to soften up the join. Join, is that the right word? Never mind, you know what I mean, <laughs> hopefully. So I'm just softening up how the colour meets the white area. And um, a little bit here. But again, I'm only tickling. Now what I would like to do, um, very subtly, is just take it inside, take the flesh colour just inside of the black guideline because I don't want that white to be the full width, so I'm just softening and again with this. I do want a little bit fading up from the lip, leaving a bit of a white line around the lip. Right. Okay, let me just do a bit on the chin. Okay, let me get a darker shade. I'll just go straight for the dark. Um, well, this isn't the darkest brown, actually. I want to fade that down. Oops. Can disguise that, don't worry. Oops. Went onto the face. 
fade that down to darker here fade down right I'll go for the darker brown now so this is the darkest brown I have fade that down fade that down Go under the chin and fade it out. Only I'm only doing a thin line of the dark. Oops, messed up again. Said so I'm colouring at an angle here, but and I've just realised how long this video is, so I'm trying to speed up. Yes. Um. Ooh, let me give us some nostrils. Nostrils, quick, quick, quick. Black. Right. I'm just gonna put um. Some black pencil in a nostrils <laughs> so they don't sort of stand out as big white nostrils okay and I'm just gonna take this dark brown and fade it okay and I wouldn't mind Highlighting that a bit better, actually. And a bit more on the cheeks, even both sides. And then I'm going to try a bit more What's this one? Pompeian Red. Pompeian Red. Pompeian Red. Introduce a nice a bit more rouge. Fade it out. Give some strong cheekbones. So Hopefully you can see how I've managed to build up flesh colours by using, um, I don't know how many I've used, five, six, seven different shades, all tickled on. So that I don't go too wrong. And yes, it's taken me ooh, 28 minutes now to do this. Um, and I'm still at it. But hopefully it'll look good. And if you wanted to, you don't have to as the white. If you've got a white, make sure the nib's clean. Um, this is just paper under the page. Um, if you've got marks pencil marks and you don't want them there then just try starting the light area with the white and this is called burnishing and i like to think of it as sort of melting the colors together it's basically softening the marks but don't go from your dark to your white because you'll transfer dark pencil into the white area which you know you don't want it there so just and if you have to wipe your nib off then wipe it off on a clean sheet so this can just help soften. But to be honest, I don't mind having some lines on show. I mean, at the end of the day, it's done in pencil. Um, I don't mind, you know, it being noticeable that it's pencil. Markings can be nice. Okay, well, I think we'll end it there. I mean, if you... Oh, one other bit I'd like to add. Just a bit more... This is the tan colour, a bit more above the nostril because that would um, be, what's the word, receding, or have shadow. Okay. So yeah, you could go on and on and build it up so it's 
darker and stronger and um, this is the point where I get carried away and I'm not happy with things so I go on and on I'd like that to be darker and to me I wouldn't mind it a bit darker just at this part of the brow because then that highlights the whiteness of that um, but maybe a grey would have worked better but anyway sometimes it's good to stop before you think you should stop um, don't forget the ears a bit of flesh there and a bit of a darker one there for a bit of shadow not worrying too much about the ears it's only a tiny part of it um, this, obviously if you want to carry on with this as flesh tone you can, if you want to do something different, different colour or leave it white you can but it's the same sort of principle, build up your colours. Obviously I haven't coloured her eyes in yet um, and I'd possibly, oh I'm going to carry on and on now, I want some a bit darker above that crease that will make her eyes really stand out more. Fading up. Yep, yeah, happier with that. I'm very gentle because I've got the black now and can all go pear shaped any second. Okay, the eyes I would do in. Oh, I wasn't going to do the eyes, but. <laughs> um, a bit of. Oh, that's not sharp enough. Right, I'm doing a pale blue. I'm leaving a bit of white around the black pupil. And then this is a darker blue. I'm just gonna do around the edges and have some places it's brought further inwards. And you can just do squiggles or spikes. So it doesn't have to be perfect because, you know, light will be catching on the eye and I'm going to do a bit darker, a bit darker blue, just on the odd area, maybe darker to there, they don't have to be totally even. And then, um, God, let me finish. I'm going to take a grey and very lightly just tickle in the corners. That's just going to highlight the white around the eye. Very carefully. You want less grey area than white. That's what I think. It's just sort of softening down the harshness of the white around the eye. So anyway, there we go. That's roughly it, how I've done some skin tone. Um, hopefully I've made it look easy. Um, but yeah, if you want to have a go, have a go. And like I said, if you only want to do the start with a flesh pencil, um, just in those dark areas, leave that white, it'll still look great anyway, um, with everything else coloured in. And just to show you a few others I've coloured, flesh tone in the clown. The cat, see, same sort of principle I've done there and I've given her a, a cleavage as well in the same pencil. Okay, that's it. Um, thank you for watching. Enjoy colouring. Bye.